Hello again and welcome to another edition of Listen Up a Minute. I'm your host, John Dowell, and along with Derek Wright of Full Motion Videos, who makes things happen. Uh, without him, we'd be just here talking to ourselves. And along with uh, L.J. Brown of L.J. Brown Enterprises, who all makes this possible, thank you again, guys, for the teamwork, which makes the dream work. We cannot do it without you. I am with three lovely ladies of the Women's Business Network, a group here based in Richmond, Virginia, and three ladies that got it started are Alfie Harry, Talisa Stubbs, and Cheryl Williams. Ladies, thank you for joining me. Thank you. Thank you. And please, oh, please tell us how you got started, whose idea was it, how did you stay up late, and, and you know, did, did you have a hard time deciding what to wear, and then I had to hide my hair looking. <laughs> We need new bridesmaids. You know. <laughs> well, um, I, first of all, I'm really grateful for the Women's Business Network, and I'm grateful for the women that Guy has put in my life, Talisa Stubbs and Cheryl Williams. It's just been a wonderful journey. Yes. The birthing of the Women's Business Network came from, I would say, from the pearls that I went through okay. as a woman, not being able to have that. Um, network that I needed when I needed to really talk to someone, when I needed someone to just to hear me out in a non-judgmental environment, mm -hmm. to be able to provide supports and for me in business without being competitive. Um, so in that hurt and pain that um, God allowed me to come up with something glorious as the Women's Business Network. So that was a a component of me of what I needed. Okay. And so when someone comes into this circle and we have in-person events, the first thing that I want them to feel is secure. I want them to feel safe. I want them to feel valued. Those are the things that I was missing as I was growing up in business. So I had to know how to do business and fight at the same time. And so what I wanted to do was to offer a platform where women could come in and just woosah and take their sword and their shield and lay it down and let's get about the business and let's push our community further. Mm -hmm. So good, Alfie. Thank that you, guys. Good. Thank that you, guys. <laughs> and Talisa, what's your story? Yeah, so... Um, and stick to it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and before she talked, she was the first... Ta -da -da -da, the one to join, yes. Yeah. yes. She caught the vision instantly. Okay. I, I did, and you know, I met Alfie and actually at a real estate meetup. I am a real estate investor and also a capital raiser. Um, and so, a little bit of backstory about why I raised capital. Um, I was an accountant full time in my corporate in the corporate world. I was the director of accounting for many school districts across California and Texas. Okay. And my husband was a truck driver. And during that time, we were spending so much time at our jobs that we were missing each other. We were missing things that were going on in our children's lives. And we just decided that after the pandemic, we had spent so much time at home during the pandemic and we just loved it. You know, we love being able to connect with one another and have dinner together. And, you know, just those things that you're supposed to be able to do with your family that people just kind of take for granted these days, right? Um, and so when it was time for us to go back to work, I couldn't, I couldn't bear to go back into that office and manage these people who were one, disrespectful. Remind you, I am the youngest black woman in a, an executive finance role and everybody under me doesn't look like me. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you could imagine that there were times where my, insubord my subordinates were being insubordinate out in the open in front of other executives. And so when it came time for me to go back, it was literally to the point where I would sit in the parking lot and I would have this gut feeling in my stomach, like I just do not yeah. want to go in here. It's time to go then. It's mm -hmm. time to wow. go. Yeah. But we didn't necessarily have a really thought out plan. Yeah. So we said, okay, 
we're going to become real estate investors, we're going to wholesale, and we're going to become real estate multimillionaires Just in like six months. Just like <laughs> on television. Just like on television. I'm telling you, we believe the hype. We were on YouTube University. <laughs> we did it. Right. All the things. We sold our house at the height of the yeah. market. And so we got a nice chunk for our house. We pulled our money out of our 401k. This is in California? This is when we were in Texas. Oh, okay. Good. So this was our second property okay. that we lived in. Okay. So we did all that. We quit our corporate jobs together. And we decided that we're going to go into this real estate thing full time. Well, what people don't tell you guys is that when you get into real estate and they say that you can get into real estate with your own, without any of your own money, especially wholesaling, what they fail to tell you is that you've got to pay for leads, you've got to pay for software systems, you've got to pay for personnel to manage systems, and so all of those things cost. Mm -hmm. And so what we found was that six months later we were broke and our credit score was 200 points less than what it was before we quit our jobs. Wow. So, now, you being an accountant, you know how to crunch numbers, so you, I take it you saw it like, wait a minute, this is not, this, what's going on here? And this just is not adding up. It's not adding up, and the thing that we failed to realize was that my $12,000 a month check was not rolling anymore, but we were still living a $12,000 a month lifestyle. The bills don't decrease the bill, you start working. Oh, the bills do not decrease. No, they don't and now we're feeding a business. Yeah. So not only are we spending the money that our business is generating mm -hmm. on business expenses, but now we're spending it on personal expenses. Yes. Now we're maxing out credit cards and lines of credit just so that we can keep this business yes. alive mm. to where we end up having to file for bankruptcy. Wow. So I had to learn an alternative way of finding money to fund my mm -hmm. deals. Wow. which is why I started to raise capital. Okay. And so, anyways, that kind of segues into how I met Alfie because I was at a real estate meetup and she was so bright and so genuine and so much love was just exuding off of her that I knew I wanted to connect with her. And when she told me about her vision about the Women's Business Network and what it was about, and how she wanted women to be able to come together and do business, but not do business in a way that didn't, that didn't allow for people to be their authentic self, right, exactly. um, but also allowed us an environment where we could talk about some of those traumatic things that may have occurred when we were younger that might mm. be causing us to act out in our businesses mm -hmm. and might be act, causing me to act out against my sister. And so diving down deep into those deeply rooted issues and being able to have an atmosphere where we can now talk about these things to where we can now move forward in business together was like, oh yeah, we need this and I'm, I'm gonna support you. You just let me know what you need me to do. Okay. Wow. Wow. Cheryl. <laughs> So I am, as I said, Cheryl Williams, and I am also a real estate investor. I have an up-and-coming real estate investment firm that's based here in Richmond, Virginia. Um, I relate a lot with Talisa and her story because uh, I started out, you know, wholesaling, uh, you know, and starting the business, and I started in 2020. So I like to call a COVID entrepreneur. <laughs> <laughs> Quickly, um, before you, um, a lot of people who may not know about real estate investing, or maybe they do. Real quickly, what is wholesaling? Because mm -hmm. a lot of people don't hear about that until they get in the seminar. Right. And it's, oh, by the way, you need to write us a check for X number of dollars. Tell us about wholesaling. Which they don't mention that on television either. Okay, but, right. for some strange reason, but real quickly, wholesaling. Wholesaling is a investment strategy. There are a myriad of investment strategies, um, you know, but wholesaling is what I'd like to say is a way, is a great way to get into real estate investing because it, it doesn't, um, initially it doesn't require much overhead, right? Um, so pretty much, you know, it's a transaction where you're not brokering like an agent. You are, you're not, you're an investor um, and anyone can invest. You don't need a license to invest, that is a myth. 
So pretty much, you basically, you uh, connect with someone who's looking to sell their home, uh, but they don't want to list for wh whatever the, the case may be. Sometimes it's a foreclosure situation, um, and they want to sell so that they don't have this on their credit. Um, so oftentimes where an investor would come in, because a wholesaler is, by proxy, is an investor um, that does a wholesale strategy, right? Um, so let's say, you know, that the seller, the homeowner comes in and says, okay, you know, you speak to them, you know, I would like to sell my home. And you agree on a price and um, you go under contract and you basically, you buy the home and you flip that deal, not the house, because you're not an agent. <laughs> you flip the deal to an in buyer, such as a fix and flipper, and you receive your assignment fee, which is your, you know, your, your, your cut or your profit for uh, managing that deal. Um, so it's, it's essentially on paper, it's an A, A B, C transaction. Um, it doesn't always work out that smoothly, but ideally that's how it works. <laughs> so tell us your role and how did you meet these ladies and your part in this and mm -hmm. how you feel about it then? Um, this is my passion. Um, I tell anyone that, you know, God put this on my heart uh, and the spark started, you know, like we talked about earlier before the interview. Um, you know, living in the Richmond area and mm -hmm. seeing all the revitalization that's happening right outside my window. Um, but um, I've always had an entrepreneurial spirit, just didn't necessarily maybe have the confidence for it. And I was in a comfort zone. I had a decent, you know, I was working for the state health department. I worked, you know, my background is in public health and dental. Um, you know, but when COVID, you know, came along, if you will, uh, the schools, as we know, the school system shut down. And uh, the dental practices were, you know, came to a screeching halt because you're literally working yes. in people's mouths. So um, even though I wasn't working in private practice, I was working in the community, working in the, the local and the school systems, doing uh, oral health care, giving free oral health care services to children. So we had already had, um, you know, our schedule mapped out for the different schools that we would go to. So in any case, you know, the school shut down, everything, you know, stopped. And my husband and I, we became a one income household overnight. <laughs> wow. um, and mind you, on top of that, I was eight months pregnant. Oh, wow. nice. So, <laughs> right. Just the way y'all planned it, I'm sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. So, you know, it's like, I was this existential thing, like, okay, oh my goodness, you know, right? You know, I, I, they don't have much work for us. They was trying yes. to find work, but we're field workers, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I decided to go ahead and step away from work uh, because, you know, they didn't know how COVID was affecting people, you know, more like, you know, yes. pregnant women. Yes. So I said, okay, let me sit down and focus on family and, you know, having this baby, uh, you know, but, the business idea, real estate was already in my mind. I was already kind of ruminating about that and thinking about it before COVID hit. But I said, this is the time, you know, it's like we country folks like to say to jump off the porch. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's what I did. And, you know, I shared that with, you know, with my husband and, and, and things. And, uh, you know, like, you know, like Talisa stated, you know, YouTube University, I went trying to do the research and things like that. And, you know, I ended up uh, coming across people that resonated with me and I found a mentor in my area. Um, shout out to the U fam. <laughs> so, you know, and uh, so I met Alfie. Um, actually, I was able to acquire my first fix and flip. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> um, God, I was, you know, blessed with my first fix and flip after wholesaling and, and so forth, and then graduated to that. And um, we met literally at the closing table. Um, so, you know, uh, with, you know, in that situation. So. <laughs> Yeah, and she, like Talisa said, her energy was just so open and honest and giving. And she, you know, she gave me a hug and she was like, sis, nice to meet you, you know. Uh, her husband is, is, what, is, is a real estate investor, my business partner. Okay. That's how I met okay. his wife. Oh, nice. So, yeah, you know, so I'm kind of coming in, you know, I'm like, okay, well, I hope she likes me. We're just business partners. You know, you, know. you know, and she was just so open and well and, and, and warm. And, um, you know, she told me about, about you know, her, what was on, you know, uh, the Women's Business Network and invited me to the luncheon. And like, you know, unbeknownst to me, you know, I, you know, I was excited. I came, you know, I was like, okay, because I had already, you know, I prayed about this. I said, Lord, you know, please bring people into my life, you know, as a new business, business uh, professional and, and whatnot that 
uh, that are good to work with, you know, that mean us, that mean well, that are good folks, good people, just in general. So, you know, I go and uh, like I said, it was so nicely put together and it was so welcoming. I didn't know it was the first one and that's how I met Talisa yes. at the first event. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, after we wrapped that up, you know, I, of course, you know, you network and talk after, I'm getting to know her better. And uh, she introduced me to Lisa, and one thing led to another, and they liked me, I liked them, and, <laughs> and I said, hey, this, you know, I'm here to help however way I can, and, you know, they history. open arms, and here we go. That's it. So, so, yeah, the rest is, <laughs> is her story. Yeah. Her story. Right? Her story. Her story. Her story. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You, so you all mentioned that it was hard to go back to work, and I'm pretty sure you've heard the stories of businesses, employers, whomever, that cannot get people to come back to work, and <laughs> probably not for the right reason. Mm -hmm. But if a group of women or women, they come to you and say, hey, I, I don't want to go back to work, or I'm not at work, I want to do, okay. I want to get into this, or I would like to get into it, or I am doing, I'm an independent contractor doing whatever, fill in the blank. Okay. Mm -hmm. How can you help me? Wow, that's a loaded question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For me, I'm just gonna take one part of it and then I'm gonna let my team tear it up because they are phenomenal. I would say, okay, I would hear them out. Once they bring the enthusiasm down, let's have a plan. Let's put a plan into place. Feelings, butterflies, gusto, zeal, doesn't feed the family. True. You have to have a plan. Mm -hmm. I would say a plan. Do I, will I, will this organization, will we anchor you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Will we support you? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's why we're here. But we're very, very strategic on how we help women. You know, we're just not going to get you in a room and get you excited about butterflies. I'm like, oh, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. And then when you leave, you don't know. How to do it, you can do it, you can do it. Right. Yeah, so yeah. we're very strategic on how we push you forward because at the end of the day, these wives have families, they have husbands, mm -hmm. and we are responsible for that space and that mindset when they lend themselves to us for that hour or two. So we want to make sure that they have a plan that okay. is doable and that their family can be proud of. Yeah, and I'll... Um and I'll also add to that too. I know everybody kind of, everybody has their own goals. So sure. some people are wanting to purchase a house and it's their credit. They need to increase their credit score. So that's their, their goal. Um, for some people, they wanna jump into entrepreneurship and they wanna know how do they get business funding, you know? And so depending on what it is that they're looking for, we have um, resources that we can connect them with to where it can take them to that next level. So let's say like business funding, for instance. I'm a board member for a company called Amplify Equity in New York. All that we do is give women, black women who are entrepreneurs, micro loans of 10 to $20,000. We don't care about credit or any of those things, but we do want you to have a business plan. Mm -hmm. So the Women's Business Network, we may help you develop that business plan. Exactly. We may help you structure your LLC to yes. where when you go to Amplify Equity and you apply for these funds, the likelihood of you getting an approval is that much more likely. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, why I got to do all that? Why can't <laughs> I just continue to cook this food in my kitchen, wrap it up, and sell it? And get the money. Now, <laughs> never, 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 never mind the, never, never mind the health code violation, guys. We, we just go, we, we just out. go look at it, and then oh you know, um, when I give it to you, it's just going to be wrapped up in a a nap. Not even the little, <laughs> the little, the little containers that you can get. 500 for 50, not even that. Uh, you're not in a little bit of form, no, it's, it's okay. just, it's here. Can you confirm it's one good. thing? Yes. What? Excellence. Everything that you oh, do. Oh, food is good. Oh, no, 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 no. And you got plenty of napkins to wipe your mouth. Oh, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> 
When I'm saying excellence, yes. everything that you do, you need to be bringing forth excellence. That yes. even goes into the packaging that you use when you wrap your products. What is your customer's experience gonna be when they get that package and they open it up? We know that the product that you have in there is amazing, but what else is there that's I'll gonna make these customers continue to go to you? Because everybody can make a casserole. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And the thing is, too, to add on that, that's excellent, sis, what you just said. The thing, too, is when you minimize and diminish your brand and what you're doing, people don't value it. Mm -hmm. So if you don't take the time to get the proper branding and as you, yeah, you can fry great fried chicken, but I don't want it wrapped up in aluminum foil. You're not. And, you, and then not only that. You're not able, once you think so small, you're not able to be able to see an open door because you're so used to just cooking in the kitchen and people coming to your house and telling Leroy to pull up in the back and you got five plates and collard green juices in the back of your trunk dripping everywhere. Yeah. When you're doing that, you are shutting yourself out from feeding kings and queens because the king and the queen is not going to get a plate out the back of your trunk. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it, you know, the, I, being facetious, of course, but they are, I'm pretty sure you, maybe you all have run into some people yeah. that just don't want to go that extra mile. Yep. I mean, I, yeah. I have to do all this to get fun. No, I don't want to write a business plan. Right. I, I just don't want to. Why, why do I have to do all of that? And why can't I just, and blah, blah, blah. Some people just flat they, don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. They may not know how to do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then they got their friend that maybe knows as, as much as they do mm -hmm. or a little more, right. maybe. Mm -hmm. And that might be relative, but they don't want to, to, to go about things the right way. You're an accountant, so you know math is the only exact science out there mm -hmm. you can manipulate the numbers all day long but two and two is still it's four, still only four. It's still and four. you at some point it will catch up with you yeah mm -hmm. so how do you get the person who they're excited about a business mm -hmm. they want to do it but i don't necessarily want to make the sacrifices or do the right thing to get my credit score up I don't want to get funding from these people because it's just too much and I've got to do all that and I'm, mm -hmm. and it might be some people in the background who may be slightly jealous because that's beyond me and you might be yeah. getting to a level that wow. I can't that I can't relate wow. to. Do you want to go ahead, Sean? Do you want to answer that? Uh, I've got to, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I my question to to that, you know, mindset, you know, that person would be okay. This is, we all we all know we all have to start somewhere, okay? Yes. You know, plates in the trunk, whatever. You know, you know, uh, make making stuff in the garage. You know, skincare, whatever the case may be. You know, we have to start somewhere. You get somewhere. started, right? And you start, move on, right. Right. right? But we have to, like I said, we have to have a plan. We have to have a strategy. You know, um, but is is this your passion? Yeah. Okay, is this something that you're passionate about? Because if it's not. And you don't, you know, this is not uh, purposeful for you other than just making some money. It's not, it's probably not going to last, you yeah. know, um, because after a while, you know, you want to grow your business and your business itself has to have a purpose bigger than you, <laughs> bigger okay. than just, you know, okay, you know, um, you know, so once we establish that, you know, say, yes, okay, you know, this is something I'm passionate about, this is something I want to want to do long term or what have you, okay. Well, you have to get in the mindset, a growth mindset, okay, you know, um, in order for you to, to do just that. You know, you have to have your business plan. You have to be able to network. Um, and sometimes that means getting outside of your circle, getting outside of your comfort zone, um, going, to, going to the places where, you know, people are where you want to be. You know, where, you, where your vision, you know, what you envision your business mm -hmm. being and things, things of, uh, of that sort. So, you know, but that's what I would ask. Is this, is this your passion? You know, what is the bigger picture here for you? Yeah, I like that, Cheryl. I like that. And another thing that I was going to mention is before I figured out that I wanted to be in real estate or um, before I found out that I wanted to go get my MBA in accounting or whatever, um, I saw people doing big things. I mm -hmm. saw other students at my college doing big things. 
but I would look at them kind of like how you're saying, and I'm just like, yeah, I don't really want to do all that much work. Like I see them and it's great and all that stuff, but I'm just not that committed. I just, I'm not that passionate about it. And it wasn't until like, for instance, when I wanted to buy a house and I really needed to get serious about building my credit, people were telling me before I wanted to buy a house, fix your credit, fix your credit, fix your credit all day. And I would say, yeah, I want to fix my credit. But then I never took the action. But there were people here willing to teach me, but they weren't going to waste their time on me. When I was ready, that's when they were going to help. But I wasn't going to waste their time. And so once I actually got in a position where I need to build my credit, that's when I took action. So when you ask, what can you say to somebody or what can you do for somebody who they want to start the business, but they don't want to build the business plan or they don't want to do all this stuff to get the business funding, they haven't hit that point yet. And that's fine. Get to that point. Mm -hmm. Don't let anybody rush you. You'll get there. You'll feel it. And you're going to move. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, uh, this is Listen Up a Minute. I am John Dow, and I'm with the, I guess, co-founders, if, if you will, of the Women's Business yes, Network, yes. Uh, based here in Richmond, Virginia. Yeah. You're an accountant. And you, I'm sure there's someone out there saying, wait a minute, you're an accountant, you have an MBA. What do you mean you don't want to, you're an accountant for God's sake. You have to follow the process to become an accountant and to be good at it. You, you, you know, so how do you say, well, wait a minute, I'm, I'm good at this, but I don't want to do that. Cause someone out there is saying that, wait, you're an accountant and you didn't, I mean, how, yeah. and you didn't want to build up your own credit score and you're an accountant and you know yeah, what it you know, it's kind of like it's kind of like if you think about it like this, if you think about a doctor, a lot of doctors you see, a lot of them are overweight. Yeah. A lot of them are preaching a lot about what you should be doing and how you should be living. But behind closed doors, they're not living that way. They've learned it in school. They've practiced it. They know exactly what to tell you what to do. But are they really living it themselves? That is how I was living. Mm -hmm. I know exactly how to do accounting. I know exactly how my book should look. I know exactly how your book should look. I know exactly how you should be investing your money and getting a return. But my own personal spending habits are not allowing me to create wealth. Why? Well, because my parents had a lack mentality. And when I grew up, my mom would say things like, don't ask for nothing when you go in that store. You know we ain't got no money for that. Or, y'all know when we get paid, we're going to buy food in the house and that's it. Don't ask me for nothing else. There was always a lack. Yeah, so we yeah. got, my dad would get paid, money would get spent. Now we're back broke and we're doing this cycle again. So it didn't matter whether I was making $50,000 a year, whether I was making $100,000 a year, whether I was making $200,000 a year. It, it wasn't was, enough it wasn't because enough. Yeah. I was trained yep. mm -hmm. to, to spend yep. money mm -hmm. this way. Mm -hmm. So that's what it is. You can be an accountant, but yeah. if you've got this mentality, yeah. yes. mm -hmm. you'll keep repeating it. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. Well said. Cheryl, you are the marketing manager. I guess yes, if you, chief marketing so, officer. And you say you're um, into real estate. Now, the person, and <laughs> as I said earlier, you know, we see these things on television, people make it look so easy. <laughs> and when you do it, you know, you know it's not. And you say you're looking out your bay window and you're seeing all this revitalization going on around you. And I'm guessing you're thinking you'd like to be a part of that. Yes. Oh, how can I get in on this? What what was one of the first steps you took? And for someone else that's out there, what would you say, okay, if you, if you want to be a part of this, or maybe a part of the next thing, or make the next thing happen in that same realm, how do you get started? In terms of real estate? Yeah, or yeah to real estate. Um, again, I, I, in my opinion, wholesaling is a great way to get your foot in the door. Um, you know, if you don't, you know, have uh, a lot of you know money, you know cap, you know uh, capital or what have you. Uh, wholesaling, you can use that strategy to build your business capital. Um, you know, you say put that money aside or what have you. Um, gator funding is one way. You know, if you have you know an issue as far as with your um, the, your earnest money deposit or something like that. You know. Um, 
but wholesale, yes. Mm -hmm. That's how I started. And then I grew into, you know, becoming a rehabber, you know, and, and going even further than that. So, you know, that, that's what I would say, you know, you want, you, you can start out in, in that way, uh, or you could also, you know, if you're not sure if that's something that you want to get into, you, uh, I would encourage you to go to RIA meetings, your local real estate meetings, uh, find, you know, uh, local investors that you can talk to, see how, you know, what their journey, you know, how, how they got into the business, um, any advice, you know, from them and just, you know, ask a lot of questions. There's no such thing as a silly question. Um, if you don't know, you don't know. Um, like I said, mind you, I came from, I had no, I didn't have a background in real estate. Um, I come from a public health background, allied health. Uh, but, you know, you can certainly learn as you go. And it's, real estate is very hands-on as well. Um, you know, so you want to be actionable about what you're doing when you decide to start. Um, you know, that's, that's pretty much, you know, my So advice. the young lady that comes to you all and say, hey, I would like to get started in something. Mm -hmm. Whether it's real estate or maybe someone, they may want to get into public health. They may want, I may want to be a dentist mm -hmm. or a nurse practitioner or a neurosurgeon or someone may want to be a truck driver. Hey, you know, I like numbers. Mm -hmm. I may want to be an accountant or an actuary or what have you. Yeah. They come to you all and you, how do you navigate them? Or do you, well, you said at first you want them to feel welcome, exactly. first of all. Exactly. And yeah, and then, like she was saying, you know, develop a plan. I think that once we all know what it is that they're wanting, so like if you come to us and you say, I want to start a truck driving business, okay, wonderful, cool. Where are we at right now? What sort of capital do you currently have set aside? Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't have any capital set aside. Okay, great, let's set up a budget plan. Let's set up a plan so you can start putting some money aside so that way in six months you have enough to purchase your truck. Okay. So when we talk about putting a plan together, we, where are you currently at in your business and help us, let us help you fill in the gaps. Okay. Okay. What about someone that's already an independent contractor? Let's say the barber or the hairstylist, or it's people way back when they say the hairdresser. <laughs> <laughs> Your royal crown. <laughs> he, he going to my lane now. Right? <laughs> there you go, girl. <laughs> because essentially, you know, barbers and hairstylists, they, they're mm -hmm. self-employed. So yeah. if they want to own their own shop or branch off or maybe take it to the next level or get okay. started and be successful okay. mm -hmm. at it. So I would say that because that's um, one of my passions is the beauty and the fashion industry. Okay. And so for when it comes to anything that you do, when it's to enhance someone's yes. beauty, okay. I will say you will have to be passionate about it. You will have to be able to know your market, know your customers, and what are your customers looking for? What do customers need? Yes. Be able to be ahead of the game. Just like now, we, um, our um, ALH & Co, my brand, we are pulling back from um, doing a lot of services and we're now doing products. The reason why, because energetically, the world is going to slow down in the next yes. couple of months. People yes. are not gonna be going to the salon. They're not gonna be getting wig installs. They're not gonna get their eyebrows done. They're not gonna be doing da-da-da. They're not gonna get their feet taken care of. So what I did is I sat down with my team. It's like, how can we service them in another way? Okay. So that means now our product our product has to be premium. So that means when we ship them out, they're good, they're great, they're excellent. This is something that they want to buy. We want to be able to turn them into another direction, self-care. Okay. So you may want to come up with market plans to reach your audience and value in yourself before you say anything about a product. Let's talk about valuing yourself, loving mm -hmm. yourself, taking care of yourself. You're important. Mm -hmm. Take a day out, relax, and then you massage their mind with self-appreciation and value. And then you can kind of slowly move in with products. And so being someone in that industry, I would say know your audience, know what they want, know what they need, study them, pray for them. Um, Put them first. Don't look at it as, oh, I sell some cream, $20, and then this is my 
um, profit, $12, and then I'm going to go ahead and revamp it. People feel that. Mm -hmm. People feel that. People feel that you don't care. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons why I did go into the beauty industry, if I can be candid, is um, when I used to shop at beauty stores and I would go in and I saw the people that owned it didn't look like me. And it was heavier than by. No customer service, mm -hmm. no value, no um, any thought process. It's pretty much self-serve until you get self -serve to the counter. Self-serve until you get to the counter. <laughs> like you actually know what you may need. Yeah, right, right, right. And what, if, right. what if you want to go left and like, well, wait a minute. I understand you want to go left, but you need to go right because. Right, because, right, right, right. right. And so, and because of that experience, that's one, any, that's one of the reasons why I birth ALH and Co. Anything that I birth is because it was a pain point to me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. And you notice that with all of us, really. All of us. Uh, yeah. All of our success and everything that we've accomplished has yeah. only been accomplished through hurt and pain. So to think that you're going to reach a level of success without going through the mud is insanity. It's insanity. <laughs> no, uh, yeah. You're yeah. going to go through the darkest of times, yes. and that's when you're going to be tried the most. That's mm -hmm. when you're going to know what you're actually made out of, mm -hmm. and you're going to be able to push yourself to that next level. But being in your comfort zone, mm -hmm. you'll never be there. You'll remain poor in your comfort zone. Like I told mm -hmm. this one girl, if you think business is Instagram pictures, Think again. Think again. Right. Think again. All of that, you know, the little reels and the, you know, sprinkle sprinkles. That's not you business. You got to do business. Real that, business. That's yeah. real. Yeah. Now, now it does help. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. I do yeah. get a lot of people in mm -hmm. my inbox saying, "Hey, I've got five hundred thousand dollars to invest." Great. I saw your social right. media. I saw that you raised private capital. But what so did you have to do before that? I had to put in that work. Okay. Right. Because remember, so, those are highlights. Those all, <laughs> right, exactly. And there you go. So, yes. But use these things as tools, but know that none of these individual tools is going to help you to get to success. It's you putting in that work and going through some of the hardest difficulties of your life right. that will literally feel like you're about to break when you come out on the other side, you realize that everything was perfect and it Perfectly was the way that it was supposed planned. to be the entire Perfectly time. Perfectly planned. <laughs> yeah. So... You know, it's, it's funny you mentioned beauty products because you, you run into people that say, well, I'm, this, okay, it's summer, it's warm, so we might be outside, we have on sandals. Well, we got on sandals, so I need to keep my feet moisturized. I don't want my feet to be ashy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As versus. Versus the person that oh, says, <laughs> I'm going to keep my feet moisturized year round, right. whether I'm exposing them or not, mm -hmm. whether I'm going out on a date or not, I'm going to keep my feet moisturized. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's like my barber said one day, we did a barbershop guy's talking, he said, you know, I, I just don't understand why a man doesn't want to keep himself groomed. Mm -hmm. And someone may say, well, wait a minute, you're a barber. Of course you're going to say that because you're a barber because you want his business, but it's, it's more than it's that. It's more than, more than that. that. It, it, yeah, you just want to keep Feel yourself. Feel good. Period. Yeah. Period. Period. And whether we like it or yeah. not, people judge you by your appearance. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. You're not yeah. going to go on an interview and, nope. you know, you need to be groomed and, oh, and, yeah. and have a tailored suit and, you know, these type of things. And you'll be received differently than yeah. someone who just, yeah. you know. Yes. The Bible says God looks at the heart, but the man looks at the outward appearance. Exactly. So if man is looking at the outward appearance and you are trying to gain favor with man, then you probably need to fix that outward appearance. Right. Yeah. Exactly. People mm -hmm. see who you are before they hear who you are. Oh, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Most people don't like that, but they do. Mm -hmm. th that's the truth. I mean, you may be the smartest person in the world, but I won't. Maybe, maybe I can tell by the way you dress or not dress. Maybe. Mm -hmm. But just, I, I won't know until you speak. Right. right. Or not exactly. speak until you present whatever it is. And I would say yeah. this, and that's an excellent point, sir. I would say this, when you cannot care about your appearance and step into a room and talk, because that means that you have 
put yourself out there and you have branded yourself, you have a reputation where you can get off a plane and come and flip flops and a t-shirt and the ripped up jeans and speak in front of thousands by because you have already done the work. But right. when you putting in the work, no, you need you to need, represent. You gotta show up. You, you gotta, gotta show represent. up. Yeah. TD Jakes can show up any way he wants to. We already know right. who he is. Yeah. Yeah. He's putting in the work. Yeah. We, we, we have to show up. Yeah. yeah. Every day. Yeah. Every point. day. Yeah, Every point. day. So you don't have that luxury to be relaxed. You don't. Until you have hit that plateau where you have been, when someone can mention your name and they can automatically associate you to a brand or to a service mm -hmm. or to um, a genre in industry. Mm -hmm. And then you can, okay, excuse me, you putting the microphone on. Hey, ladies, I didn't have time to ch Then we welcome that because why? You, you have mastered mm -hmm. that field. Mm -hmm. You have mastered it. But until then, you don't have the right to step in front of me with hair rollers in your hair, talking about we're going to do a business plan. No, you don't. You have not earned that. Yeah. Yeah. I want to sell a new brand of hair rollers. <laughs> <laughs> Hair, hair, hair. This is a live demonstration. Hair, hair, hair. <laughs> hair rolls for guys who wear their hair like mine. They do, you know, listen. I get up two minutes, one minute, and my hair's done. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Me too, I only wake up like this. She's good. She's beautiful now. Beautiful. <laughs> Real quickly, what would you say to the person that is who wants to attend your event for the first time, obviously, or to someone out there who may want to start this at whatever location, mm -hmm. how they get in touch with you and what would you recommend? Yeah, sure. All right, so you can start by going to our Facebook page. The Women's Business Network is, uh, you type, up, type Women's Business Network into Facebook and you will see our nice, beautiful logo is yellow and our colors are black and gold. You can't miss us. Uh, we're also on Instagram with uh, when this business network is on, on Instagram. Uh, we were on Meetup, uh, but we're going to have more events coming up, uh, which will be on our social media pages um, and so forth. And we will have a website as well. Um, so you can certainly at this point find us on Facebook. That's where we are. Yeah. And um, and then yeah, I'll keep current. Now. Yeah. And then I'll just add that. Um, if you're out there and you're interested in joining the, the Women's Business Network, um, if you've ever walked into a, a meetup or a networking event and you felt like you couldn't talk to somebody because they were not approachable, then mm -hmm. this is the organization for you. Um, if you've ever gone to a networking event and you wanted to get some information and the information that you really wanted wasn't provided, then this is the organization for you. Um, and then lastly, if you've ever been networking and you just kind of felt like the people that you were around weren't really supporting you and they weren't really lifting you up to be your best self, then the Women's Business Network is the organization that you want to be with because that's everything that we're all about and that's everything that we all needed and that's what yes. we provide in the atmosphere of the Women's Business Network. So, wow. And I can honestly say that's excellent and that's excellent. You guys are, you know, I'm truly blessed to have such beautiful women to work with. It's like a, it's like a dream. And one thing that I was telling um, the team how we are different is we're doing something that no yeah. one has ever done. You will never see the founder and the co-founders reach out to the members and find out exactly mm -hmm. what you need from us, from your business and from personal and self-development. We're in the process now of beginning to put our 24 platform together. So when we present is what you need mm -hmm. it's what you ask for it's tailor-made okay. tailor yeah. for you sweetie nice. tailor-made baby nice. so you can look around on any other and i'm saying it unapologetically you can look around on any other facebook page you're not going to find a wbn that will just really focus again what i needed what we needed 
when she was going through and starting her business mm -hmm. and her credit was bad and she lost everything and had to start from zero. When she started her business in and, and, and wholesaling and she had to believe God and had a baby in her tummy. <laughs> this is real, this is not, no, yeah, yeah. this is life. You do live, we, life. We've been there. Mm -hmm. We've been there, we've been at the plight. But the one thing that we, what makes us different is we're willing to take the makeup off and share our story. So we, so we not coming in as grandiose. Right. We been there. Mm -hmm. So we lean forward. We lift your hand up. We straighten your crown. You got it. It's going to be a little rough, but we've been there. We're going to get through it. And we're going to get through it. And on that note, folks, we will wrap up. Ladies, thank you so very much. Thank you. This has been fun. This has been truly magnificent. We may have to come back and do another segment so we can get maybe a little more into detail on some yes. of the other things that you all are uh, involved in because so much more we could have yes. talked about. And at some point, I know somebody's going to say, well, wait a minute, what about a men's network? So hold on, Cheryl, look. <laughs> We are gonna start doing that with the, we was working on something for the men, wrong with Okay, no, but that's all right, that's all right, that's all right. <laughs> yeah, we, but see the thing is, this is, we don't have a men's business network, but, right, what, we, but right. what we do have is in 2024, we're gonna be having all sorts of events where the women will be able to incorporate their husbands. Yes. So just to give you guys like a little snippet. Give it to them. Yeah. We'll have an event where the husbands will be on stage okay. and they will be answering questions about what it is like from their perspective of being with a, a woman, an entrepreneurial woman, a strong woman, a, um, a fierce woman in business and who may be even the breadwinner. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? That look How like? does that make you feel? What does that family dynamic look like for you? And so we do have these things going mm -hmm. on for men as well. So mm -hmm. you guys make sure that you guys stay yes. connected. Yes, yes, yes. Again, <laughs> folks, this has been Listen Up A Minute. I'm John Dow and for the entire crew that makes this all possible, thank you so very much and we will see you next time. <laughs>